Welcome back, everyone. Uh, my name is Mr. Joka. I'm the CC maker, but now I chair this session. And uh, to uh, save as much time for uh, lecture and discussion, I only give to you the name of the speaker and the title. And the first speaker is Professor <coughs> Ryohei Nakatsu from the Design School of the University, speaking on uh, what we are in the society and to which direction we go. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ryohei Nakats. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> basically my background is engineering, but uh, now I became senior, so more and more I became interested in the relationship, not only technology, but uh, relationship between technologies and society uh, and this kind of thing. <coughs> so the title of my talk today is What Kind of a Change Would We <coughs> face in the 21st century. And actually the answer is here, agendation of the world. But at this stage, probably you don't know what agendation means. So in my talk, I want to <coughs> clarify what it means. The first one is, <coughs> as you already know, technologies, especially AI. <coughs> it's uh, <coughs> changing the world very rapidly. So the recent very big news is that, as, as you know, most of you know, AlphaGo has defeated World War Champion. <coughs> and because of this, it is said that more than half of the existing jobs will be replaced by AI in the near future. But my question here is whether this is true or not. OK, so already, uh, <coughs> shall we uh, <coughs> show you this kind of image. <coughs> but in, in April, with Naoko Tosa, I <coughs> visited New York and uh, stayed near Times Square for one month and visited Times Square many times. <coughs> the first time I visited New York and Times Square, that was almost 40 years ago. But this time, and, and, and of course after <coughs> this I visited New York many, many times, but this time somehow a question came to me, has U.S changed in the last 40 years or not. Of course, <coughs> on the surface, uh, there are a lot of digital <coughs> billboards, and uh, there has been a lot of changes. But if I walk around, what I found is that this kind of very small shops, hamburger shops or hot dog shops, almost the same. We found it in 40 years ago. And on light, uh, there are a lot of souvenir shops, except <coughs> Oh, it's almost the same, except this kind of small change. So this means that, <coughs> in one sense, there, you know, our daily life or our lifestyle, from our from the point of our daily life, our, you know, <coughs> lifestyle, it seems that there has not been a big change, only a small change or not, no change. But again, <coughs> is this true or not? Of course, there is some. There are some big changes. One is this one. This, this, this kind of scene did not exist 40 years ago. Not only in Japan, all over the world. Most of the people are watching <coughs> smartphones while walking, waiting bus, uh, even in the <coughs> subway or something like that. Probably I think this is the biggest, one of the biggest changes that happened in the last 40 years or something like that. And last year, there was another there were another big changes. Of course, you know, this, this is the one, <laughs> right? The interesting thing is that most, most of the people could not, un, could not expect this, but it happened. <coughs> that, that, that even, in, even for Japanese, it was very strong, very big, you know, supply. And here, small one, breaks it. Also, this was not so much expected. So these are the big changes. <coughs> and what we, I want to say is that there are very close relations between these two phenomena. So what, what is this? That, that is what I want to talk in my presentation. So <coughs> in my presentation, I want to talk what is actually happening, what is the underlying basic movement, and what is called this movement, and finally, <coughs> what will be the future of the society. The first one is what is actually happening. Uh, <clears throat> probably our communication behaviors are changing, basically changing. 
right? So now people like to communicate with the intimate ones anywhere, anytime. On the right, <laughs> left side, it's a meeting, formal meeting, but still this guy is communicating probably with his friend or something like that. And on the right side, <laughs> it's a family gathering, but each of the family members are doing communication with somebody else. So this is the biggest change we have seen. Probably, but at the same time, we see a very similar thing. Uh, until mm, 10 years ago or something like that, it used to be said that a person with a camera and a glass should be a Japanese. But nowadays, not only Japanese, people all over the world like to take photos anytime and anywhere. So this is another big change. So probably from these two phenomena, we can say something. What is actually happening? I dare say this is the relationship between formal behaviors and private behaviors. And uh, uh, my, my opinion is that formal behaviors and private behaviors are merging. So <clears throat> again, a meeting is a formal event. It is expected that people behave in a formal way. But still many people are doing private behaviors, like checking email or something like that. On, on the left, it's a sightseeing spot. To take photo, take some place and some time. So, so, you know, it is very, very troublesome for other people. But still, people like to do this kind of behaviors. When I uh, thought of this kind of formal behaviors and private behaviors, uh, it, it reminded me uh, of a very interesting thing. It's a honne and tatemai. Honne is a Japanese meaning private opinion. Tatemai is a Jap again Japanese meaning formal opinion. And Japanese people have been accused of having honne and tatemai. It's a double principle. But actually, people all over the world have honne and tatemai. It's a very natural thing. What should be accused is that Japanese tend to confuse these two. On the last side, it's a very good example, Mr. Aso, his, his number two in the uh, Aben cabinet. Once he said, actually, I was against the privatization of post office when I was a member of the cabinet. It's his op uh, private opinion, right? But as a, uh, <coughs> he should not express this in a very formal situation, right? So that is, I think, in Japan, this kind of thing usually happens. But now, this is not you know, local issue, but it's a global issue. Again, this guy comes. Wow, Trump goes. I will build a great wall between US and Mexico. Wow. Any, change, any negative polls, fake news, just like the CNN, ABC, maybe some, something like that. I understand. Probably we understand. There are many people who think like this. But they don't express this because they know, we know, it is not so relevant to express this, especially in a very formal situation. So it's a typical, you know, <coughs> confused between uh, Honne and Tademai. But this is happening not only in Japan, but at the global stage, global level. That is uh, probably the biggest change that happened. So then, <clears throat> next, let's go to the next one. What is underlying basic movement? Probably I think there is some reason uh, that <clears throat> caused this kind of change. Probably I think, uh, my, my opinion is that underlying basic movement is a paradigm shift. Probably paradigm shift is going to happen from logical thinking to emotional thinking. To understand this uh, <clears throat> more clearly, Probably we have to look back our long, long history. In old days, in ancient days, uh, humans were animals. So reason, logos, and emotion were merged together. Then the written characters appeared around BC 4000. Then we started to think. We started to be, to be aware of ourselves. So that was the beginning of the separation between logos and pathos. Then, uh, in Greek era, the famous guy, Plato, and his philosophy came. So he, as you know, uh, of course you know better than me, he compared human to a carriage with two horses and one driver. 
and logos. <coughs> one drive, I mean logos. It's a rational part, part of human behavior and thinking. On the other side, pathos means emotion. And there are two aspects in emotion. One, one, one is the bright side. It's passion. But at the same time, there is a dark side, instinctive desire. So what he said, what Plato said is that logos should control that side of pathos with the help of bright side of pathos. So this has been the long, long, you know, kind of a principle for human. And we try to realize this. So, uh, to, to, to summarize, emergence of written characters initiated the separation of logos and pathos, and Greek philosophy declared it explicitly. But of course, as you know, uh, it takes a long, long time uh, <coughs> to realize this. But somehow, interesting is that in Asia, there is another different philosophy, Asian philosophy. Asian philosophy emphasized the unification of mind and body, human and nature. So, as you know, it's an Asian monism. So, if we discuss it deeply, we should discuss the relation between Asia and uh, Western countries and Asian countries or something like that. Maybe later, Prof. Tosa will <coughs> touch this very interesting <coughs> topic. But in my presentation, I don't know. I don't, I don't touch this because it takes a long time. Okay, then, <clears throat> even though, you know, Plato declared the separation between logos and pathos, this kind of thought or philosophy were, was, you know, shared on the high-level people, for normal people, for ordinary people, of course, their, their, their daily life was still, was still very emotional, emotion-based one. But then, the invention of printing technology came around AC 1445. What this means, because <laughs> printing technology made it very easy for people to know, to read, to know, and, and know philosophy or thoughts, right? So, so then the separation, the, the basic concept, philosophy of separation between logos and pathos was spread and accept, uh, accepted by people. So it accelerated the separation of logos and pathos. So that, that is a long, long history in, with, probably I think in Western countries. And interesting is that Marshall McLuhan very clearly declared this. He clearly mentioned that the invention of printing technology contributed to the making of typographic, typographic man, if a people depend on written characters, or written sentences or something like that, instead of other images or something like that. That is actually happened. Then, why this is happening now? Right? So, I think this is, we have been trying to separate logos and puzzles for, you know, based on using a lot of time. And now, somehow, the, on the opposite, opposite. <coughs> Tendency, opposite movement is happening. People is becoming more emotional, depending on you know uh, communication, uh, emotional communication with their friends, with their families, or something like that. And again, this. So until recently, we could not we could not expect this kind of guy could become leader. Not only leader, it's a world leader, U.S. president. But his behavior is very emotional. Not, not logical, not rational. So, probably I think this means that it looks that logos and puzzles are after the separation. After the long years we try to separate these two, somehow are approaching and even merging together. Okay, then why, why? what has caused this movement? Let's go to the next one. Well, I, actually, I asked many people, uh, it, not only in Japan, but in other countries, <coughs> and discussed with them why this kind of <coughs> thing is happening. And most of them answered me, it's new media, such as mobile phone, iPhone, and this kind of thing. It's, it's, it's based on, especially before this, the network, right? Network technologies and the new media. 
such as mobile phones, iPhones, and this kind of thing. Mm, it is true, actually it is true, but it is a little bit unbelievable within a very, very short time this kind of big change happened. So I, I, I read, uh, I tried to study a kind of a media history, and what I, what I found is that the invention of movie and telephony, if this is only at this stage a high, kind of a hypothesis, but I believe movie and telephony, that happened more than 100 years ago, actually initiated the movement. So this movement actually happened more than 100 years ago, and then now somehow been accelerated recently. So let's uh, look at the first one, <coughs> Invent, uh, telephony. So as you know, uh, telephony was invented by Graham Bell in 1876, uh, more than 100, uh, 100 years ago. And telephony initiated the merge of logos and pathos. Why? Mm, probably you can understand. Uh, you can easily understand. Telephone introduced emotions as an important factor of communications. Uh, before the <coughs> invention of telephony, the communication method uh, between two people in a, low, <coughs> in a distant place is only sending letters or this kind of thing. Of course, letters could become emotional, but basically, written characters, written sentences should, be, should not be emotional. So should be uh, rational or <coughs> logical. But telephony, to, by telephone communication means it's a voice communication, live com voice communication. It is very natural to introduce emotion into voice communication. So this means that telephony lowers the barrier between office and home. Until <coughs> telephony, uh, telephone came, it was very, very difficult for businessmen to communicate with their wife, children, staying at home. But after uh, telephone was introduced, even during working hours, they can communicate with their wife. So, <coughs> I think because of this merge of formal, formal and private life, a kind of, it, it spread, it, it gradually spread. And <clears throat> mobile phone, actually mo what mobile phone did is to accelerate this kind of trend. Because using mobile phone, we can communicate with a friend and the family members anytime and anywhere. And the next one is the movies. A uh, movie was invented again, as you know, uh, by Lumiere Brothers in 1895, again, uh, more than 100 years ago. And the invention of movies initiated the merge of logos and puzzles. Why? Movie introduced images as important communication media. So uh, before movie came, again, uh, the main, main <coughs> major communication method for us uh, especially in the case of people who live who, who uh, in, in distant places, it's to use written characters. So written characters, its basic <coughs> function is to send logical messages, not emotional messages. Of course, we can do that, but still the basic function of written character is to send uh, logical messages. <coughs> but then images. As you can see in movies, started people to make uh, started to make people emotion dependent because images have so strong images have this have so strong power to appeal to our emotion directly. So 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 the movies by watching movies as you know you know uh, that that is the reason why <coughs> Hollywood movies most of the Hollywood movies are so emotional. So so that is the basic function of movie. To, to make people more emotional or something like that. And recently, uh, computer graphics and animation technologies has advanced a lot, have advanced a lot, but their role is <coughs> accelerated, this trend. So that is the reason why there are so many emotional uh, <coughs> movies using computer graphics and animations made in Hollywood recently. So, <clears throat> now, I want to say that the reason why uh, the merge of laws and battles is happening 
uh, that <coughs> this kind of you know the invention of telephony and movies initiated because these inventions initiated this movement. So I, I dare say that after long years of separation, logos and patos are approaching and even merging together again. So after probably I think if we uh, if we say that <coughs> it was initiated by uh, <coughs> Plato, then after 2000 and several hundred years ago, again, uh, the, the, the <coughs> opposite uh, movement, the merge of logos and pathos is going to happen. So then, based on these observations, or uh, my, my, my own opinion, let's I talk, I'll discuss a little bit about our future, what will be the future of our society. So again, for this question, I discussed with many people uh, what will be the future of our communication, or our society, our behaviors. And many people say globalization is a trend, globalization. And as a result, and several people who know Mark, Marshall McLuhan very well, say, you should say global bridge, suggested by him, by Marshall McLuhan. But somehow, I, I think the meaning, actual meaning of global bridge is misunderstood. Many, many people think that it, it means, uh, you know, internet, internet, uh, you know, connected, connected society, realized by internet. That's true, but not only this. Village is the key word. So in village, in a small village, most of the people know each other and their daily communication, their daily behaviors are very emotional. So what, what he wanted to say, what Marshall McLuhan wanted to say is that in the future, the world will become one small village. And that is actually happening. Right? But, but I so show you by the photos of people using mobile phones anytime and anywhere, and also uh, the, 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 the Trump uh, saying, <coughs> using Twitter, uh, expressing all the time very, very emotional <coughs> messages. Uh, but I want to say <coughs> globalization means actually it's a westernization. And <coughs> on the other hand, Asianization would become a new direction. So, <clears throat> I think you would agree, Westernization means that to introduce Western cultures, Western you know, technologies, and in one sense, Western uh, lifestyles. Probably I think this is, here is the reason why IS is so strongly against this kind of trend. They want to keep their own, in one sense, you know, what they, are, they want to do it to their, to keep their own, you know, along, traditional lifestyle or something like that. But somehow, westernization, we cannot stop it. But at the same time, it's on the surface, uh, westernization is happening. But as I explained, uh, on the deep level, the opposite, <coughs> the opposite uh, movement is going on. It's Asianization. Uh, <coughs> as I said, in Asia, uh, actually, the separation of logos and pathos did not happen. So we, we did not have such kind of <coughs> philosophers as Plato who declared the separation, uh, the importance of the separation between Logos and Pathos. Uh, Asian famous philosophers usually emphasize the importance of the integration of uh, human with nature or something like that. So the future of a society, what would be the future of a society? So this is a very, very difficult question, uh, and probably I cannot answer this. Uh, <clears throat> but one thing, uh, one, one, you know, one thing I can say is that our behaviors are in one sense going back to those of ancient era. And uh, <clears throat> because it goes too, too far, the bad dream is that we will go back to the era when we were animals. So <clears throat> in that sense, you know, it's very symbolic that Trump was elected as U.S. president. And very similar, you know, we, there is very similar phenomenon like cool Japan. 
So the, 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 these ladies very emotional. They, they don't care about you know logical thinking. What they care is very you know emotional to a subject very emotional relationship with their friend or something like that. But <clears throat> this one, whether we are going to back to to Daya, uh, where when we were animals or not, this is a very difficult question for, for us to answer, for me to answer. Uh, if <clears throat> we want to predict the future, I think the good thing is that we would look up, look back our long, long history. And <clears throat> then I, I, I <clears throat> studied a little bit about the long, long history of human, humankind. As uh, you know, uh, human, <clears throat> it started, uh, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> Our, you know, Prof. Yamagi already left, <coughs> but this is probably, I think, <coughs> it's special way. A human <coughs> start, uh, left uh, Africa uh, around BC uh, 60,000, and then started to spread all over the world. Uh, one party went to Europe, and the other, another one uh, went to uh, <coughs> East and uh, arrived to lay here around BC uh, 40,000. And then the rest will go up to the north and uh, <coughs> went to the uh, <coughs> North America and then go down, went down to a long, long <coughs> way and they arrived to the south part of the <coughs> South Africa. It was uh, around BC 12,000. So when I <coughs> knew <coughs> this kind of long, long history, I was so much, so much impressed because you know on on their journey there should be a lot of difficulties. So why could humans spread over the world instead of various difficulties such as the adaptation to cold weather? Why they they had to went so far away to the north <coughs> and also the move beyond the sea? Sometimes. Probably they, 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 they try to, 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 to <coughs> move beyond the sea or, or, you know, they could not see the island, the other side. Probably I think human other species have the capability of evolving even if they face unexpected situations. So this is still AI cannot solve. But big data and deep learning can solve it. What already happened? What is, you know, so un unexpected things AI cannot do? Right? That, that is probably the present day AI has <coughs> the, the problem the present day, uh, day AI has. <coughs> and the last, uh, last <coughs> of my thought, it's very stupid. I don't know whether you would agree or not. Probably emergence of new type of readers, such as Trump. So <clears throat> after we know, after I knew, I knew that human other species have capability of evolving, even if uh, they face an unexpected situation. So maybe what is happening now could be understand if we think it's a kind of an evolution, new evolution, new evolution or something like that. So it's very stupid, but to to to, to think like this, but. Emergence of new type of leaders such as Trump might okay might mean that humans are evolving to a new direction that uh, Plato could not expect or something like that. Okay, uh, but but this is still only a kind of thought and probably I think uh, I have and we have to think about it and study more or something like that. So anyway, it's the end of my presentation. Okay, thank you very much.